presenting Core, an operating system for many cores. So this is, a, this is a paper by 12 authors, so I didn't talk about them put all the authors on the page. So the brief overview of the paper is that uh, the paper is trying to present a technique that allows multi-core architecture to overcome um, memory access bottlenecks. So we've seen that in the past that memory access is a big problem in uh, multi-core architecture. So this paper is trying to solve that problem in a different way. So the key idea that this paper uses is that uh, rather than the operating system trying to control uh, shared data, uh, this control is transferred to the application level. So the applications actually control which data needs to be shared and which needs to be private. So that's the brief overview of the paper. Now let's look at some uh, background and some motivation as to why we actually need to do what we're doing. Um, we have observed that uh, through many uh, experiments that applications spend a lot of time in the kernel space actually executing operating system code. Uh, for example, we saw that uh, MapReduce, which was written for, uh, which was rewritten for multi-core uh, system, actually spent 30% of its time uh, running uh, the operating system code in a 16-core machine, and this is quite a lot. And this time actually increases as the uh, number of cores in the system increases. So this is actually a big problem that needs to be solved. This bottleneck is mainly due to the uh, due to accessing shared data. Uh, the problems that arise out of uh, accessing shared data are uh, one uh, serialization. That is, uh, when we have shared data, we we have to uh, take logs to access the shared data. And when we take logs, the logs end up serializing your private code. So this is one of the problems due to uh, shared data. And the other problem is uh, when when you have uh, shared data, you would uh, and these shared data are being accessed from uh, cores uh, from different cores. You would end up uh, trying to uh, take uh, from someone else's cache and invalidating their cache. So that would that would again result in costly cash misses. So these are the, quite the two problems that we uh, face when we have uh, or when we have uh, shared access. So uh, why actually the operating system needs to uh, share these data? Uh, the simple reason is that the POSIX semantics demands it. The POSIX sem uh, semantics, which is implemented on the uh, operating system, they demand that the data be shared. A simple example is uh, they ran a micro benchmark, uh, which what it did was it just spawned off a few threads, and each thread uh, tried to create, uh, try to open a file descriptor, clone it, and then just close the file descriptor. So this simple benchmark, uh, we uh, they ended up uh, finding out that uh, actually they uh, accessed a lot of shared data. That is. Each of these uh, file descriptor need to uh, access a global page table, global file file descriptor table, and the access to this file descriptor table was uh, had to be serialized. So this ended up uh, proving very costly. So current practices uh, for scaling OS. So currently, what uh, the operating systems follow, this uh, practices which the operating systems follow to uh, improve this, uh, to improve the cost of these shared access, is that they try to uh, avoid shared data altogether, but in most cases, this would not be possible. So what they did was they tried to redesign existing uh, kernel data structures. Like they uh, came up with uh, fine-grained uh, fine grain locking, uh, something called uh, weight-free primitives, and advanced uh, synchronization uh, techniques like RCU and things like that. So these are the practices that were being uh, used to uh, scale the OS. So what Core came about and uh, tried to do is basically uh, move this control from the application level to from from the operating system level to the application level. Basically, say give all the control to the application level, and application decides uh, when uh, a data needs to be shared and when it needs to be private. So uh, they brought about a few important interface changes in the operating system design itself, and uh, the operating system, the type of operating system that they used is called as an exokernel. What we mean by exokernel is that it's a completely stripped down version of the regular kernel, 
just that the kernel uh, handles the part where uh, it takes care of the security. So it just uh, it moves all the control to the application level and says, uh, and lets the application uh, allocate memory, uh, use the have direct uh, access to hardware and things like that. And the operating system only checks whether the particular application has uh, permissions to use those hardware, and it checks whether the uh, resource is available or not. So these are uh, so the control is completely passed down to the application level. So uh, that's basically an exo kernel. To implement Cori, uh, basically we have uh, three new in interface changes. Uh, the first one is address range. Then we have uh, kernel cores and shares. We'll so talk about each of these in detail in the uh, coming section. So these are the important uh, interface changes that Core made to the existing operating system. So the first uh, first one is address ranges. Um, so the thing to understand here is uh, operating uh, multi processors share memory in two different ways. One is uh, a single application can fork fork off a number of threads, and each thread may be sharing a common address space. So that is one way of sharing address. And the other way is uh, private address space. That is, an application may spawn different processes, and each process may have its own address space. And these address spaces are, uh, I mean, and when they when the processes want to share ad uh, address space between them two, they use a system called a void MS. So basically, these are the two different ways of uh, sharing uh, address space. One is the shared address space, and the other one is the private address space. So let's try to see what is the cost of each of these options that we have. Uh, on the left side, we have shared address space. On the right side, we have private address space. Uh, on the left side, we see that uh, there are two cores, and each core is running a, a particular thread of the process. And the threads have to share something called as an MM struct. Uh, what this MM struct is basically, it's a kernel data structure which is uh, necessary for managing the address space. So on the right side, we see that each uh, each core has its own MM struct, which is uh, which which is not being shared with the other core. So the uh, in the first case, in the left side, uh, where we have the shared address space, we see that uh, the threads have to contend for this uh, this structure, even when they are trying to do a private mapping. Private uh, address mapping. That is, uh, even when the uh, address space that the thread is trying to allocate is no way, it is not need to be not not needed to be shared with the other thread. It still has to uh, go through this uh, common MM struct, which is shared with the other thread. So that is clearly a bottleneck. So that disadvantage does not exist with the private address space. So next slide. Let's try to see if the private address space has any disadvantage of its own. So in this figure, what we can see is uh, each thread uh, ha each thread needs a page table, uh, which basically has the page table entries of each of the pages which is being mapped to that particular process. So on the left side, we see that uh, core 0 and uh, core 1 share a single page table. But on the right side, we see that core 0 has a separate page table, and core 1 has a separate page table. So the first time, uh, so OK, what Linux does is it allocates pages in a very lazy way. Uh, what, what I mean by lazy way is that uh, although, an although a process will ask for a certain number of pages to be allocated to itself, it will allocate these pages only when, uh, the operating system will allocate the pages only when uh, the process is trying to touch the page for the first time. So until then, uh, the operating system doesn't allocate it. So this is the lazy way of allocating pages. So the first time a page is touched, the, uh, a page port occurs, and page is brought into the code, and uh, it adds a page table entry into the page table. So, uh, but in case of the private address space, uh, private address space, uh, Although the uh, cores might be trying to share a page, uh, each time uh, a page is trying, each time a page page ports, so uh, each core will have to uh, have its own uh, page port for the same page. Basically, in the shared uh, page, if either core zero wants a particular page or core one wants a particular page, it is brought into the page table and the other core uses it. But in the private address space case. Uh, 
uh, each score will have to have its own uh, page point for exact same page. So that is again clearly a problem with uh, the private address space. So uh, we saw that both kinds of address spaces have their own problem and Cori is trying to solve these problems. So what Cori uh, wants to do is to have the best of both worlds. So basically it wants to uh, solve the problem of uh, the uh, private address space that we saw and also the uh, page table uh, sharing that we uh, saw. So what Cori does is uh, say each core has its own uh, root address space. Uh, which is called the AR struct. So each core will have its own private root address range. And uh, also, whenever a core wants to share a page with the other uh, core, it will allocate another structure, which is going to be mapped to both the uh, both the cores. So basically, whenever uh, whenever it needs to uh, access anything which is private, there is no contention on the private structure. And there is contention only when you try to access something from the uh, shared mapping. Uh, what we see here is basically we are trying to solve the page table uh, problem that we uh, encountered earlier. So each, uh, we have two levels of page table here. And uh, uh, the, in page level 0, we have the page table entries which are related to the uh, shared code. Uh, and in the page level 1, we have the private uh, pages, that is pages which are not being shared by any other code. So when you encounter a, a page part on a shared page, the page table entry goes into page level 0. And when you encounter a page part with respect to a private page, it goes to page level 1. So this kind of solves the problem that we uh, saw with respect to uh, the earlier uh, situation. So the next idea is uh, kernel course. So, um, what, what, what's the problem here is that basically when an application tries to uh, uh, tries to call uh, invoke a system call, uh, so what happens is that uh, the kernel is uh, the kernel part of the kernel code is executed. Some of the data structures in the kernel are touched, and when uh, a, the application tries to uh, invoke a system call from a different core then all these structures have to be uh, invalidated from the cache line of the first core and then move to the second core and so on. So this is again a problem. So what Cori wants to do is basically it wants to dedicate a few cores in the system purely to do the kernel work. That is purely to run operating system code. It wants to dedicate a few cores and then run the application in the rest of the cores. So the application get to decide uh, how many cores or uh, how many cores needs to be dedicated for running the kernel code. The next idea is shares. So uh, as we saw in the file descriptor uh, example that I gave earlier about the micro benchmark, uh, the kernel must map these application visible references into the address space of the kernel. And uh, Sometimes uh, it would involve having a shared page table or shared file, uh, file descriptor table or something like that. So the challenge is for the OS to figure out when, it's, when it needs to share these uh, page tables or common data structures and when it needs to make it private. So in Cori, what we do is we let the application uh, on the go create a dynamic uh, lookup tables and uh, so it gets to decide whether it needs to create a shared, uh, say the example of the file descriptor table, it can decide when it needs to create a shared file descriptor table or when it needs to create a private file descriptor table. And it also introduces a few interface changes, like for system calls, uh, it can uh, pass an argument like uh, share ID or file descriptor table ID uh, and things like that, which will tell it whether it needs to go into the shared file descriptor or it needs to go into the private file descriptor. So my friend Tianan will talk about uh, the implementation details. So for a few minutes, I'm going to be talking about uh, implementation and uh, evaluation of your uh, experiment and also the conclusions. Let's come to the implementation. So Cori uh, actually runs on a both AMD and uh, Intel external version and the, their implementation could be simplified by using a 64-bit virtual address uh, space. But uh, the author did mention that uh, their uh, there's nothing in the implementation relies on uh, 
space, a large uh, address space. So um, the implementation could be divided into two levels. Uh, for the low level, the, uh, they implement the Fourier objects, mm, but uh, basically include the architecture-specific functions and uh, device drivers. And uh, also, as uh, you can see, it's 11,900 and 150.77. And for uh, the higher level, uh, uh, it's actually a Unix-like service uh, a service library, and these are uh, accessed by the application. I mean, uh, linked by applications and executing application perspective domains. So uh, it provides us the, all these function, uh, all these supports for buffer cache, seek for, and, and so on. Uh, it's also um, it's also another 11,900 C and C++. Okay, let's go to the evaluation. Um, as you can see, there are four, uh, there are uh, five parts of the evaluation, uh, except for the experiment setup. There are uh, we are gonna talk about three key ideas of the core design and as well as two applications uh, that I just mentioned. So let's come to the first one. Uh, the author set up the experiment environment on AMD's 16 core system with a 64 mem uh, gigabytes of memory. And to uh, to measure the number of cache misses and average of latency of cache misses, they use an AMD implemented hardware event counter. And also to use this counter, the, uh, the kernel is patched with this uh, perfect 2.6.35 uh, to allow application to use this counter. Well, uh, the open system they are using is uh, Linux Studio. First one, uh, address uh, ranges. So as Aaron has already mentioned, there are two things to be investigated. One is for uh, contention of private, um, I mean, contention cost of uh, I mean, implementing deployment in maps for private memory, and the other is actually for shared memory. This is uh, is here as soft page plot plus for memory that is used on multiple uh, cores. So uh, the author's ex expectation is Cori should behave well on both situations, and other designs of operating system will perform well on either one of them, but not both. So let's come to the result. Oh, sorry. Uh, so the author did use uh, two micro benchmark. Uh, first is memory flow, and the other is memory pass. And for memory flow, what it does is it has each core allocate its own uh, 100 megabytes array and modify each page of the array. So it's, it's like has, it has each core has it, its own private uh, array. And so as, all, as we can see, uh, the private thing, I mean the, pri uh, the operating system with each core has its private uh, memory address should behave better on this one, right? And the other is memory pass. So it has one core has a uh, allocated one meg uh, 100 megabytes array and touch each page of this array and pass it on to another core. So for this situation, uh, the operating system with a shared uh, memory uh, space, I mean shared address space should perform better on this, right? So let's come to the result. The first one is for memory flow. This one, uh, this is the, the authors compared the uh, core performance with both uh, Linux with separate uh, address space and Linux with a uh, single, uh, uh, with shared address space. So as you can see, uh, this one is memory clone. It has, uh, it has each core have, uh, allocated 100 megabyte uh, array, right? So uh, the expectation is Linux with separate uh, um, address space should perform good, as well as, uh, uh, oh, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, Cori should perform well um, too, right? So this is Cori, and it's here. And this is uh, the mix with separate uh, address space, and it's also here. And as, as we can see, the single uh, Linux with single uh, address space it goes up very fast when the core goes uh, when the core the number of cores increases. And you can also see the line goes slightly up here. That is because um, the core, uh, the MD processor they are using they have 16 cores and each each four core is placed on one chip. And once, uh, once one core has a, mem a soft uh, a page fault, it will cl clear up one, uh, a, four gigabyte, uh, four, a four KB uh, page. And the rate of a core to clear a page is 1.2. And the rate of uh, 
each each chip, I mean for each um, for each four cores, the rate of that is 1.7. So whenever there are more, there are more than one cores on one on the uh, on the same same uh, chip, you clear a page. Uh, the memory processor on the chip will be, become the the bottleneck. So that's why it goes up. So this is the next one is a result for memory pass. And as you can see, uh, it is with separate uh, map address space goes up because it has to move one, uh, we move one uh, uh, 100 megabytes array to another private uh, memory space, right? And the share, the one with the next with shared memory space and also for it on, the, on this one because it has uh, has shared memory space, you can just move the pointer to the other. Yeah. So the, map, the data won't be moved to the copy. Okay, let's come to the current course. Uh, for this one, uh, the author they use a simple TCP service and which accepting uh, incoming co uh, connections and write um, 128 bytes to the connection before closing it. So. Uh, authors are actually uh, comparing two kind of uh, configurations. Uh, one is dedicated and the other is for. For dedicated, it's actually um, use of kernel core for all for handling all the uh, all the uh, network processing and for polling, it's only using a kernel core to pull for uh, packet notifications and transmit the. Uh, So um, there's a uh, so there's a there's a thing that uh, should be mentioned at first. The network device, the author they are using for the experiment, uh, it only accept uh, it has a upper upper bound for its performance. It only has uh, accept uh, nine hundred thousand packets per second. So which means uh, uh, a lot of, uh, one ten, I mean, higher than ten thousand connections per second. So that's why there's an upper bound here. And so, in this situation, to compare uh, the performance, uh, what we should do is we should compare uh, how many cores does it take to reach the highest performance, right? So for um, for for dedicated configured uh, server, as you can see, it takes four cores to reach the upper bound. And for this polling uh, configuration, it took uh, 11 cores to reach the upper bound. So which means uh, that configuration allows each core to accept more uh, connections at the same situation, right? So the reason for, the reason for this is actually caused by um, less uh, level three uh, catch misses. So this one actually demonstrates uh, what's the catch misses mm, for uh, each configuration. And as you can see, this line is for uh, the author. They include the Linux configura uh, configuration as a reference. So as you can see, um, dedicated uh, configuration has has a um, like the the L3 level um, cache misses stays always like, always the same, right? So third 
one is shares. Um, to do this, uh, authors they, they gave to uh, micro benchmark to um, compare the performance of uh, Corey and the other uh, calculations. Uh, so uh, they use an add, uh, uh, they add up a core segment to a global share with share add object and remove it from the share with uh, share delete object. And the other uh, benchmark is uh, has the same scenario, but the only different the difference is the share is local. So um, to to demonstrate the performance improvement, they use this one to show the performance, which is uh, this is thousands of operations per second. So uh, as you can see here. Uh, per core share uh, memories is um, increasing uh, operation, I mean, increasing total numbers of operation. Sorry, let me zoom in. And uh, this global share memory is, uh, uh, it performs relatively well for the first three but it goes down as the core number increase. And the reason, so the uh, authors they conclude that uh, a query application can use shares to avoid the bottleneck that might be caused by contention on kernel uh, data structures. This one, as you can see, and um, at 16 cores, global share has 10 uh, L3 cache misses, while uh, no L3 cache misses for the uh, local share. Okay, so here's applications. Oh, as uh, Aaron has already mentioned, um, we have we can use these two applications to um, demonstrate the. Uh, the for performance improvement of Cori uh, or Cori. So first, first is uh, map reviews. Um, so uh, what Linux does is uh, force share a single um, address space, and what Cori does is each core map the memory segments holding intermediate results using the core shared uh, address changes. So uh, as you can see, for less than eight cores, um, actually Linux performs, uh, actually, I think Linux performs almost as, uh, as well as Cori. And the reason why for this is Linux is um, uh, Linux has a uh, has a uh, handler for uh, soft page fault, which is 10% faster than Cori. So for uh, that's just why for more, uh, less cores, Linux uh, I mean the handler is 10% faster than Cori renders no contention. So when there's a, there uh, there are less cores, uh, the contention will be uh, the, the rate of contention will be lower. So that's why Cori perform, uh, Linux performs uh, as well as uh, Cori when there are uh, less than eight cores. So after that, Cori actually performs good, uh, much better than, uh, than Linux. This is the relative uh, result of this page, of the, this result. So as you can see, Cori is almost 25%, it's uh, over 25% uh, better than uh, so applications with, uh, uh, in this uh, in this experiment they uh, <coughs> sorry. they have uh, they have a FireSum, I mean they have an application called FireSum, which could be configured in two models. So first what is FireSum does? Uh, Python accept, accepted a file name as an input and returned the sum of the bytes in that file. So it reads in the file and sum all the bytes of this file and return the value of it. And 
it could be in, uh, configured into two models as this here. First one is random uh, model, which sums a file on a random core. And the other one is locality uh, model, which assign a file to a specific core and sum the request file on this assigned core. Uh, this is a structure of configuring a four core, I mean a four core chip. But the X3 experiment is configured on a 16 core chip. But you can, as you can see, it configured um, two, uh, half of the number of cores as a FlySum cores, and another half number of cores as a front-end WebD server. So these are servers, and these are the FlySum, they will read the uh, FlySum cores, they will read the file from the servers and do the, do the uh, uh, bytes sum up thing and return the value. Um, So for those uh, files which is uh, which are uh, which has a, which have the size less than 250 uh, 250 kbytes, uh, the bottleneck the bottleneck is actually uh, the bottleneck is actually uh, <coughs> performance. Oh, sorry, I mean the performance is limited by the performance of WebD front end network stack. So for those cores which is which are <coughs> For those files which are actually lot, uh, bigger than 2,048 kbps, uh, the bottleneck is this. So, since the chip cache cannot fit in such size of uh, file, oh, the performance will be largely turned down. But between these ones, as we can see, um, locally, uh, the locally, uh, local locality configuration is much better than the random. Because uh, they can, I uh, can store its assigned file in chip caches and perform better than the, and, and gives a, gives a better performance than the random one. There's something, uh, there's something not taken. So based on these uh, result, as we can see, Cori always, mm, like Cori are. The, the performance of Cori is as of what we expect it is. It behaves better than uh, it behaves better than a different configuration of operating system as we expected. But the author they did mention that Cori uh, lacks some features of commonly uh, operating systems such as Linux, which influence experience, uh, which influence the experimental uh, results of both positively and negatively. So it actually lacked it does lack some features, which might cause the increment uh, incremental of their performance. But there are some uh, also some other features which will perform negatively. So it's kind of balanced. Well, the conclusion is, mm, Tori is a uh, is a new kernel that follows this um, follows the principle here. Uh, in order for applications to scale on multiple core architectures, application must control sharing. So to give a better performance rate. And it's actually uh, it's a address range and kernel core and share abstraction ensures that that each kernel data structure is used by only one core or by default, while uh, giving applications the ability to specify to specify when sharing of kernel data is necessary.